the daily. History, I bet you didn't even know about. Edwin C. Bell, 1845 to 1923. I have no clue on who this guy is. Seriously, I don't. Just kidding. This guy did something very historic, but 80% of the people in Titusville, I guarantee you don't know who this guy is. But without this guy, you wouldn't have the Drake Well Museum. Titusville, PA, well known for the discovery of the first successful oil well and the Drake Well Museum. But did you know Edward C. Bell started the first museum? I guarantee you watching me may have passed it or you pass it every day and you don't realize the drake well you know nowadays is not the drake well of the early 1900s let me blow your mind for a minute 43170 west central avenue yeah the tiny brick building that sits in the back that everybody passes and everybody ignores that nobody ever touches the brick building that was the first museum in Titusville yeah 1913 Edwin C Bell started that till his dying day in 1923 he collected all the oil memorabilia through the years even out at Drake well there was nothing till 1914 August 27th 1914 they put the sandstone up to mark where Drake well drilled the first successful oil well. But Edwin C. Bell had a museum on Central Avenue. I thought you guys didn't even know that. And you go by this building every day. Yeah, a little hidden fact, the more you know. Graveyard facts you, you didn't even know about. Yes, I'm a historical superhero. Sometimes I wear stretchy pants. It is for fun. When you are a man, sometimes you wear stretchy pants in your room. It's for fun. Don't worry, I won't tell nobody. The current location of the Drakewell Museum was completed in 1934, but they keep adding on and keep adding on and keep adding on. That's 90 years. From when George passed away. Think about that, how big Drake Well has grown. It's crazy, but Titusville is known for the valley that changed the world, and that it did because oil, well, oil is oil. Come on. But wait, there's more. Did you know? I know, it's crazy I'm gonna, what I'm gonna tell you, but Titusville, yes, you know the well, you know the oil history here, but did you know Titusville, PA saved the whales? Because if Titusville didn't save the whales, they'd be extinct right now. You're like, don't tell me a story about whales because I don't care. You're gonna care, because I'm gonna tell you. Early 1800s, there were 700 whaling ships out killing whales to kill them for the whale oil to burn in lamps for people to have light in their house. I know it sounds crude, but that's what they did back in the day. These ships are going around just hashing and slashing. Jeez, that sounded horrible. I apologize for that. But they were killing the whales for the whale oil to make people's houses, well, light up. But 1859, old Colonel Drake here in Titusville says, nah, I know, I'm gonna dig a well, make it successful, and a guy's gonna come along later on down the road named Abraham Geschner to distill the oil and figure out a way to get kerosene out of the oil I'm pumping out of the ground. That way, you can put it in your lamps and have a brighter light. It smells less than the whale oil. Makes sense to me, right? That totally killed the whale industry. Nobody went whaling anymore. Shamu should be thanking Titusville, or Colonel Drake, because Colonel Drake was like, I love the whales. I don't think he even said that, but he might have though, you know. 
So long story short, kerosene saved the whales. The more you know. But I gotta tell you a story. 1820, there was a ship of 1,500 men whaling, whaling, and a mean bully whale. He put the bibs on and put these guys in traction. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. The ship was called the Essex, and this whale beat it up. He's seen it in the ocean, and he basically kept ramming it and destroying it. 1,500 men, and nobody died, people. They shouldn't have been out killing whales, but that's what they did back in the day. But a whale sunk a wooden ship called the Essex in 1820. They were out whale hunting. This guy had enough, you know what I mean? He put the bibs on. He put these people in traction. Yeah! He buddy rebelled them. Aspen? This is an Aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. And honestly, I tell you, I didn't know that little building on West Central Avenue was the first Drake Well Museum. I mean, I've been driving by that for years. Comment down below if you have too. I dig history. If you haven't got the drift already, right? You should too. Whoops, <laughs> I left you on my car. Let's not do that again. Yes, Titusville is the valley that changed the world. But the big difference is back in the day of Colonel Drake, they would drop nitroglycerin down to break the rock up so the oil could flow. Nowadays, they use hydraulic fracking. Much safer methods nowadays. This week's weird story, I'm going to take you on a journey about death, a birthday cake, nitroglycerin, one man's boot. Are you interested in hearing something like that or you want me to move on to something like something else? I think not. How many stories have I done on nitroglycerin? I mean... You remember the story I did on the guy who cremated himself in Petroleum Center? That was a crazy story, right? But on December 16th, 1869, the torpedo factory in town here on Spring and Franklin Street, well, it blew up because it had 1,500 pounds of gunpowder and 4,000 pounds of nitro. Well, they accidentally touched each other and it basically blew part of the town apart. I'm just it's a true story, people. Look it up. But only one man died, so that was the brighter side of the story. I know, these nitroglycerin stories are crazy, but the one I'm gonna tell you this week, it's gonna blow your boots off. I'm just, that, I'm just saying. <laughs>
I'm going to take you to the craziest story. You know my crazy stories. They're all over the place. But I'm at Lamy Cemetery in Dempsey Town. Now fast forward 61 years from the explosion in Titusville. Where a man named Worthy Sullivan. Well, he met, he met his fate in this area. I got to tell you too. Right where this weird story happened is Caden. And, and then the old church, the Lamy Church of the 1800s is now a residence. But it's, trust me, I knocked on the door and I got permission to do my filming here. Because in this field right here, this is the field right beside the old Lamy Church. And a man named Worthy Sullivan, this is his birthday. He's 42 years old. And I'll get to the point in the story where there's something going on because it's his birthday. But Worthy Sullivan had to carry 50 quarts of nitrogen to a town near Oil City. This is the stretch of road 428. This is the road Worthy Sullivan was coming down the road in his old Dodge truck. And he incurred in December here, this was all snow covered. You couldn't pass through here. So what Worthy had to do, what other people were doing, they were cutting through the field at the old Lamy Church. And there was a house over here, and I'll get to the house here too, too. But he had to cut through the field in his old Dodge truck with 50 quarts of nitrogen. Now Worthy Sullivan worked for a guy in town, A. Coupler Jr. Torpedo Company, hauling nitrogen to wells around the local area. And he was, he he was headed to Oil City in a place called Ten Bottom. No, what they called Ten Mile Bottom. That's what it's called. And I never heard of the place before in my life. And I don't know if it still exists. You're talking about 1930 when this fateful trip happened. Now I should say too, I am between Cherry Tree and Dempsey Town, just outside of Titusville. So this guy come from Titusville all the way to here about what is it, 12, 15 miles? Yeah, Something like that. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a real short, short drive. But he made it all the way to here in the December winter of 1930 in his old Dodge truck. But when he hit the field, cut across because he couldn't cr cross on the highway. So you need to picture this. Old Worthy Sullivan coming through the field in his old Dodge truck. And where were Caden is standing? The nitro's jumping. And it's not a good sign. Because as you know, the stories I've done before with Nitro, you can't shake it. It's got to be tight when it's being delivered. Well, it shook so much, it, sh it shook seven inches over in the truck. And you know what happened next. Caden blew up. He's a, Caden's got a good point. He says, well, when he blew up, he put a five foot hole in the ground. And he says, well, what about the hill? I said, maybe, maybe he blew up down here. I don't know. But what happened was when the Dodge truck blew up, a five foot hole went in the ground. And the sad thing about it is, it's gone now. I can't find it, but there was a house. Either, I would assume over there. Now anybody watching this knows information, go downstairs below and put it in the comments, because I don't know. Either a house here, or there was a house over here. And those people had no idea what was going on here. For the sake of the story, let's just put the Sayers house. It was a Sayer family house here. Now, I don't know, so this is just where I'm gonna put the house because I don't know if it was over here or over here. But when old Worthy's truck blew up, the Sayers were all home. Everybody was home, the dad was in the basement, but what it did, when that blew up and put the five foot crater in the ground, it knocked everybody on the ground. It blew their house off the foundation. It blew all the windows out. The doors all got blown in. All the pictures on the wall got tossed. And when they come to and come out of the house, there is a huge hole in the barn. Now, I don't know where the barn stood either, people. I'm just telling Caden, when you do these stories, you gotta be Columbo. You gotta be a Jim Rockford and do your best research because I don't know where the original church was. The Lamy Church here now, which is a, a residential house, was built later on. So I'm just saying, I'm in the local area, I'm in the right area, I just, I can't pinpoint where everything exactly was. So no don't, pinpoint location. There you, yeah, no, no pinpoint pin, location of it. Yeah, but I am in the right area or where this horrific accident happened to this young man of 42 years old. The hole in the roof of the barn 
was just minor, minor details to that. But what the sad part is, is nobody knew what happened to the man driving the truck. Nobody knew his identity. Nobody knew nothing about this guy. He was basically, remember the old vlog I did in, uh, I almost said Punxsutawney. I never went to Punxsutawney. <laughs> Punxsutawney. <laughs> Video coming soon, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Petroleum Center. That's it. That's the one. I got it. That's the one. Remember the video I did in uh, Petroleum Center where the guy cremated himself on all the nitrous? But, uh, nitro, I should say, not nitrous. But basically the same happened to Worthy Sullivan. He cremated himself, except for one thing. The only thing left from 42-year-old Worthy Sullivan was his boot. That's how they identified this man. Think about this. Oh, here, come on, point at this boot. Get in the shot. This is an aspen tree. It's maple. Oh, jeez. I don't have no maple bits. Red yeah. maple, actually. Red maple? Yeah. I knew, I knew it was maple. I can't. I don't know if it's hard or soft. But. Every tree to me is an aspen. So there is. It's, it's, it's what it is. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. And two, I should say, where Sullivan's Dodge blew up, the five foot crater where his truck was, 50 foot radius all around here was Dodge parts, tires, doors, mirrors. The truck was just scattered all through here. And again, too, this is not the exact location. We're in 100 yards of where this happened. But when you read a story from the 1800s, they don't give you every nook and cranny of where it happened. They give you locations. And I know for a fact in the story, Lamy Church, this is where it happened. And the sailors, sealers, however you want to say it, lived over here or over here. And I did read in the story too, they do have living relatives. So if ever by chance, if you're watching this, let me know where your grandparents or your great grandparents house was. I should say too, what's up with the 1800s? Gray eyes. Remember last week's story? The goon I did the story on? He had gray eyes. But this guy wasn't a goon. He was just doing his job. But he had gray eyes. What? I don't get it with the 1800s that people have gray eyes. Was the food they ate? It makes no sense to me. Old school Joe's so old, I'm surprised he doesn't have gray eyes. <laughs> Here's the sad part of the story. His wife was baking him a cake for his 42nd birthday in Hightown. And he caused the power outages around the area. She had no clue that her own husband caused the power outage in Hightown from Dempsey Town. So as they're baking the cake and putting the stuff on in the dark, already baked, they're just putting the stuff on in the dark. She had no idea her husband was dead. It's the weirdest. These stories, they keep getting weirder. And like I said, he had gray eyes. I don't know what the deal is with people in the 1800s. <laughs> See, I'm going to have gray eyes one day, and then I'll be talking about it. But yeah, another crazy story. And I hate traffic. Thanks for watching this, this edition of the Old School Joe Daily. Uh, this is Old School Joe, and I'm New School Caden, and we're signing out. <laughs> Peace. Dude, that was awesome. Yes. I want to tell you, too, before we do sign off. He sent me an email saying he wanted to go out and venture with me. I go, sure. When it, when my schedule meets somebody else's schedule and it works out, I'm, I'm happy to go out with anybody, except the, for the, the loony ones that send me stuff that just don't make sense. But if you send me a legit email, I'll go out with anybody. If they want to go out exploring with me, just go downstairs below or send me an email. But yeah, it was fun. It was fun today. Don't, like Timu. I got an email from Team Movie the other day. And they're like, if you give us access to your accounts, we're going to give you $500 to promote our product. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to give you access to my account. Exactly. No thanks, Team Moo. I'm not going to do it. If you do come, though, make sure you wear your seatbelt. He peels tire on everything. I do time. not. It was, it was, there was gravel on the road. <laughs> oh, sadly, this is the end of Monday's episode. Today is Sunday. I normally wrap everything up on Sunday try to remember if I forgot to tell you guys anything during the filming 
and I throw in my two cents about how the video how the video went and what I said and what I did. But I gotta go do a personal family thing here in a half an hour. So I'm gonna wrap this up, go do my thing, and then come home and edit this video. But let me say something before um, let me get the clarity of emailing me. If you email me and you want to hang out and do something with me and tag along with me when I do these crazy adventures, you might have a month, two months, three month wait. Um, my schedule is so busy during my job. I do work and then these videos I do. For example, Caden, he uh, contacted me a month ago and we just now got together. So that's that kind of gives you the view of it might not be right away. I'm just I'm just saying because I don't want to make anybody angry because I don't want you to expect to contact me and then next week will be you'll be on a video. It's just that's not how it works. I got other people penciled in where they want to do stuff and I want to go do stuff with these people, but my schedule is just not working right now because the old YouTube keeps me busy. But those were the days back in the 1800s. When crazy people delivered crazy products. Now, I'm not saying the guy's crazy. He was just doing his job. But man, that stuff, all these stories I read, I would not touch nitroglycerin for my life. I would, no way. So look for me next week with another weird, crazy story. Unless I decide to do something else and veer off on another way and do something. Hey, who knows what I'm going to do? Who knows? See you Monday. Yeah.